Liam Kerr. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, yesterday, a Press and General report revealed that an Aberdeen man had died following a 999 call handler error last month. Information regarding the call had not been passed to the dispatch team, and by the time the error was realised and an ambulance dispatched, 33 minutes had passed. Tragically, the man had passed away. What action... ...reported about this uh, tragic case, and first and foremost, uh, my heartfelt sympathies are uh, with the family and friends of the individual who has sadly passed away. Um, this uh, case is under investigation by the Scottish Ambulance Service. The Health Secretary has already uh, spoken to the Chief Executive of the Scottish Ambulance Service to seek and get assurances that there will be a full uh, and proper investigation. Given that that investigation is underway, it would uh, not be appropriate for me to go into any more detail or speculate uh, on the outcome of that, but uh, the Health Secretary would be happy to correspond uh, further with the member when we have more detail as a result of the investigation that is currently underway. And Tavish Scott. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The First Minister will be aware that the Energy Regulator off chairman SSE uh, have announced this week the closure of the Lerwick Power Station with a loss of 25 permanent jobs and apprenticeships. Uh, they are to replace the power station with a cable importing wind from Caithness, but will not allow that cable will not allow large-scale renewables to be exported from Shetland. Will the First Minister ask Ofgem uh, to consider how such an ill-conceived proposal has seen the light of day? First Minister. I'm very happy to ask the relevant minister to discuss this further with Ofgem. I mean, we are aware of the uh, proposed new energy solution uh, for Shetland, which would seek to connect Shetland to the Scottish mainland for the first time, uh, while also having some uh, diesel uh, supply on island. Uh, while you know, there are aspects of that, of course, that uh, contribute to uh, our uh, approach to cleaner energy, there are also understandable concerns uh, about security of supply and also the issues around export uh, that Tavish Scott uh, has referred to. Now, this is something that, of course, uh, has been brought forward by uh, the uh, Scottish and Southern Electricity uh, Networks uh, and also has uh, been overseen by Ofgem, which is an independent regulator. But I recognise uh, the concerns that Tavish Scott is expressing uh, on behalf of his constituents. I will ask the uh, relevant minister to speak uh, with Ofgem to make sure that those concerns are conveyed and then to have further discussions with Tavish Scott as a result of that. Further supplementary from Marie Todd. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Roaming charges within the EU have been abolished from today, meaning that we don't get billed excessive amounts for making calls and sending text messages abroad. Has the Scottish Government had any assurances from the UK Government that they'll work to preserve this benefit in Brexit negotiations? First Minister. Uh, we've had, to the best of my knowledge, absolutely no assurances from the UK Government on what is a very important issue for uh, people who use mobile phones uh, in other European countries. Uh, there's no doubt that the abolition of roaming charges is one of uh, many benefits arising from the digital single market and I think it's vitally important that Scottish consumers continue to benefit from this uh, post-Brexit. Uh, in spite of uh, continued lack of meaningful engagement on the part of the UK Government on any of these matters, the Scottish Government will continue to engage in good faith to ensure that our interests are represented as these negotiations get underway, uh, as I would remind uh, the Chamber in just four days' time. For James Dornan. To ask the First Minister what the Scottish Government is doing to support LGBT rights. First Minister. I'm very proud of this Government's record on LGBTI rights, uh, including, of course, the introduction of civil partnerships uh, and now equal marriage for same-sex couples. Uh, we have uh, robust and inclusive hate crime legislation in place. We've established the LGBTI Inclusive Education Working Group, uh, and we also intend to reform gender recognition law. Uh, these actions are why Scotland continues to be ranked as one of the most progressive countries in Europe regarding LGBTI equality. Of course, it's not just the actions we take for those living in Scotland that are important, but also our willingness to stand up for LGBTI rights across the world, something that this government is determined to continue to do. James Dornan. I thank the First Minister for that answer. The First Minister will be aware that the LGBTI Pride celebrations are happening across Scotland this month and in Belfast next month. At the same time, the Tories, in a desperate attempt to cling on to power at Westminster, will be dealing with the DUP, who have used their veto to block legalising same-sex marriage in Northern Ireland a total of five times. Does the First Minister share my concerns about the message this arrangement sends out to members of the LGBTI community, along with many others, and does she agree with me that this just highlights the importance of complete transparency with any proposed Tory deal with the DUP before it is signed and sealed? First Minister. Um, 
Let me make let me make a number of points. The first one, uh, before I make it, let me recognise up front that the issue of same-sex marriage in Northern Ireland is one to be decided by politicians in Northern Ireland. It's not one uh, for decision uh, in this Parliament. Uh, but I do think it is regrettable uh, that Northern Ireland is now the only part of the UK where loving same-sex couples cannot get married as they can in uh, England, Wales uh, and Scotland. And I certainly would hope that we see that change uh, for the better in the not too distant future. Um, second point I would make is to uh, record uh, my deep seated concern and I believe the deep seated concern of many not just in Scotland but across the UK right now at the prospect of some kind of grubby deal between the Tories and the DUP to allow Theresa May to cling to office uh, you know I've just uh, listened to Ruth Davidson talking uh, about the national interest I don't think that kind of deal particularly if it's not completely and utterly transparent is in the national interest in any uh, way, shape or form. And I say that not just because uh, of some of the views of the DUP that perhaps not all of us, but many of us feel deeply uncomfortable uh, about, but I also say that because of a real concern about the disregard that is being shown for the Northern Irish peace process. Uh, I think one of the most shameful aspects of the whole Brexit process from the beginning to now has been the disregard shown by many for that peace process. Uh, under the Good Friday Agreement, the UK government is meant to be an impartial uh, broker in Northern Ireland. And I think there is First a Minister, real this question is about LGBT uh, rights, please. raised by uh, John Major and others uh, about whether that can be the case. So I think these matters are serious. Uh, I've seen this morning some suggestion that the deal, if there is a deal between the Tories and the DUP, will not be published in full. I think that would be completely unacceptable. John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. <clears throat> Excuse me. First Minister, in September of uh, 2015, the Scottish Government uh, received a letter from Arlene Fraser, the present leader of the Democratic Unionist Party, then in her capacity as a, a Government Minister, and it was about Scotland's equal marriage legislation. My colleague uh, um, Claire Bailey, Green MLA for South Belfast, describes this as part of Ms Foster's anti-equality offensive. Rather than hide behind freedom of information, will you publish that letter? First Minister. Uh, well, I'm happy to give consideration to that. Uh, my understanding is that that letter was about civil, uh, the, the translation of civil partnerships into uh, marriages here. So I'm, I'm certainly happy to uh, consider that. The, the commitment of this government, and I, you know, I believe something we should celebrate, is that this is a commitment shared across this parliament to equality is beyond uh, any question. Now, we are responsible for our own actions in this regard, but on issues like equality, whether it's LGBTI equality or any other aspect of equality, the importance not just of doing the right thing at home, but standing up for the right thing uh, in other countries and the world over is also important, and that's a responsibility I'm very aware of. Question five, Peter Chapman. And thank you, President Officer, and I refer members to my register of interest. To ask the First Minister what the Scottish Government's response is to the Audit Scotland update on the CAP Futures programme. First Minister. One of these days I'm going to ask Peter Chapman to tell me which particular page of his register of interest he's, he's referring to on these matters. Um, over, over the past year we have made significant changes to the development and implementation of the CAP Futures programme. Uh, clearly, there is a lot more for us to do, but I welcome that this update report from Audit Scotland recognises some of the progress we've made and reinforces the actions we've taken since last May. Uh, we will now consider carefully the findings in the context of the significant improvement activity that is already underway. Peter Chapman. I am grateful to the First Minister for that answer. I have to say I am absolutely shocked at how complacent the First Minister is here. Yeah. 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 Because, because, let me be clear, farming communities are not so relaxed about these issues as she is. Mm -hmm. This IT system has already created the worst farming cash crisis in a generation. Correct. Now we learn there is still no backup system. Should this IT system fail, there is the possibility of a 60 million in EU fines for non-compliance, and yet more money is needed to get the system working. Farmers across Scotland are still waiting for 2015 and 2016 payments. And worst of all, worst of all, we face at least another year of this chaos until this system is fully compliant. In light of this catalogue of errors, does the First Minister take responsibility for this catastrophe? And how can our farmers ever trust her again? 
First Minister. Well, as I've, as I've said in this chamber before, I take full responsibility for everything this government uh, does. There is not a shred of complacency on the part of the Scottish Government about this uh, issue. Fergus Ewing has uh, already apologised. I've apologised to farmers uh, for the failures that have been experienced in this system. But that is why a significant part of uh, the time and energy of Fergus Ewing each and every day right now is taken up with ensuring that this system uh, delivers as farmers have a right to expect it to do. Um, obviously, the member has made uh, a number of, of comments there that, you know, do require to be uh, challenged. I mean, Fergus Shewing, just before First Minister's questions uh, started, uh, challenged some of them. This issue about uh, disallowance uh, risks, uh, the figure of 60 million is entirely speculative. Uh, just as the figure of 125 million, which was quoted in last year's Audit Scotland report, was also entirely speculative and turned out not to be the case. In terms of the uh, issue about the budget, the financial ceiling uh, for delivering a compliant uh, cap system is being held to. And in terms of payments to farmers, it's because we are acutely aware of the importance of cash flow for farmers that we put in place the loan uh, scheme, making sure that farmers uh, got their payments. And of course, as Fergus Ewing already uh, said uh, this morning, 99% of payments in terms of the 2015 round uh, have been made and we are continuing to work through uh, the 2016 payments. So we will continue to give this our absolute uh, and full focus and attention to make sure that farmers get the service they deserve. Mike Rumbles. On the 31st of May last year, Fergus Ewing, in his first appearance in the chamber after his appointment, said, and I quote, the farming industry needs to have confidence in the payment timetable and that we will do what we say. There must be no repeat of the problems that we faced in 2015-16. No repeat. Does the First Minister have confidence that he has fulfilled that promise? First Minister. Uh, yes, that is entirely what Fergus Ewing is focused on doing. That's why we've got the loan scheme in place. That's why we are taking the steps to make sure farmers get the money uh, that they are expecting while we take the steps that many of which are narrated in the Audit Scotland report today to make sure the IT system is doing the job that it is there to do uh, while we continue to pay attention to the overall budget and the value for money issues at the heart of this. So we will continue, led by Fergus Ewing, uh, to focus absolutely on making sure uh, that we deliver in the way that farmers across the country uh, have the right to expect. Question number six, Lewis MacDonald. To ask the First Minister whether work by Scottish Government officials on a second independence referendum will now cease. First Minister. Uh, well, in case I didn't mention it earlier on, uh, last week the SNP won the general election in Scotland with more MPs than all other parties combined. But as I have already said, uh, I will reflect carefully on the election result before uh, setting out my views on the next steps. What is clear? is that the people of the UK have rejected a hard Tory Brexit and it's imperative that we now build a cross-party, four-government approach that will protect all of our interests at this time. Lewis MacDonald. She lost a heap of seats. Her flagship policy cost her votes. Yet she seemed to think that she'd won the election. Order. That was... Order, please. That was Theresa May last week. <laughs> but Nicola Sturgeon this week seems to be equally in denial. Given that the First Minister has said that she wants to be involved in negotiating Brexit on behalf of the UK, will she not now recognise that she cannot possibly be sitting at the top table and heading for the exit at one and the same time. First Minister. Well, look, I've, I've made my position clear on the reflection I will now give to the issue of an independence referendum. But on this issue of Scotland being represented in these negotiations, whatever our disagreements and other matters might be, I would have thought that every MSP across this chamber of all parties would agree that Scotland should be represented in these negotiations. It really is really does speak volumes. You know, I would expect it from the Tories. The Tories want Scotland's position to just be to keep quiet and do whatever the Tories tell us to do. But I am astounded 
that not just Labour, but Lewis MacDonald in particular, who has actually been very sensible on these matters over the past year, is not getting behind the Scottish Government and demanding that Scotland, Wales and both sides in Northern Ireland are fully engaged in these negotiations. Anything else would be completely unacceptable and I couldn't believe that Labour would ever go along with it. Question number seven, Graham Day. Thank you. To ask the First Minister how the Scottish Government is marking Carers Week. First Minister. Well, firstly, I want to thank carers uh, for all that they do. The Scottish Government continues to support Carers Week, which encourages all of us to better understand the challenging circumstances that unpaid carers across Scotland can face. Uh, Aileen Campbell and uh, Jamie Hepburn yesterday visited Life Care in Edinburgh to recognise the work of carer positive employers, employers who support unpaid carers in their workplace. Our week-long benefit take-up campaign is also running this week in partnership with Young Scott to increase awareness and uptake of carers' allowance amongst young adults with caring responsibilities. Graham Day. Uh, I very much welcome the actions just highlighted, but I wonder if the FM could uh, outline what further measures and support will be provided to unpaid carers in coming years. First Minister. Well, the Carers Act uh, will extend and enhance the rights of carers to support uh, from next April uh, and that will help them to continue to care if they so wish but also to maintain a fulfilling life alongside caring. Uh, we will also increase carers allowance to the same level as job seekers allowance from summer 2018 and we're committed to increasing carers allowance further for those looking after more than one disabled child. Uh, we'll also continue to promote the carer positive scheme to employers uh, linking with our fair work agenda. Uh, 72 organisations have so far been recognised as carer positive employers uh, which covers just short of 300,000 employees. Uh, that helps carers balance caring and employment responsibilities but also helps employers retain valuable staff. So across a whole range of issues we are absolutely determined to do everything we can to support carers in the invaluable work that they do. Thank you very much. That concludes First Minister's questions.